Family Theater presents Mona Freeman and Alan Young. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Alan Young in The Lion Tamer. To introduce the drama, your hostess, Mona Freeman. Thank you, Larry Chatterton. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. <laughs> Donald Wallington Wrightsmith III lives in a very nice but small Middle Western town. With such a distinguished name as Donald Wallington Wrightsmith III, one might think the lad was at the very top of the social register. But alas, he's only a poor window trimmer in the town's leading and only department store, the Halliday Emporium. Of course, there's always the possibility of his owning the Emporium someday, since he's madly in love with Jeannie, the boss's daughter. But unfortunately, the odds are against him. Since Papa Halliday is neither pleased with the romance, nor with Donald's abilities as a window trimmer, or anything else for that matter. Oblivious of this, however, the biggest problem in Donald's life at the moment seems to be a little thing called money. <laughs> you know, that wonderful green stuff which is supposed to bring us happiness. And what's more, Mr. Halliday? If you don't give me a raise, I'll, I'll quit your old job. Huh. Now, Mr. Halliday, I have all respect for you, believe me, and this glorious establishment. But you must realize that as Andersonsville's best window trimmer, I have been dependable, reliable, trustworthy, and therefore knowing you cannot do without me, uh, I feel... Who are you talking to up there? No one, ma'am. Well, get down here. Your breakfast is ready. Uh -huh. I'm coming, Mrs. Peebly. Just practicing my speech. Not the asking for a raise speech again. Yes, ma'am. Huh. You've been practicing that speech for months. When are you going to get around to saying it? Today. Maybe. Well, I hope so. It's about time you were paying me some more money. Mm -hmm. You got a nice room and you ain't giving me enough for it. Yes, Miss Peebly. So you'll be sure you ask him. Yes, ma'am. And another thing, Donald. You ain't doing enough work around here for the things I've been doing for you. No, Miss Peebly. So Sunday, you figure on mowing the grass. Yes, ma'am. And washing the windows. Yes, ma'am. And don't forget to ask that Halliday for your raise. <laughs> And what's more, Mr. Halliday, if you don't give me a raise, I'll quit your old... What did you say, Donald? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Jeannie. Donald, don't you know any better than to talk with pins in your mouth? Mm. If you swallow one, you can die. Would you be sorry, Jeannie? If you die? Well, of course. We'd have to find another window trimmer. <laughs> oh, by the way, Dad wants to see you. Me? Yes, you. Oh, but Jeannie, what, what, what about? Well, how should I know? But you better run along. You keep Dad waiting and he'll be furious. Oh, all right, Jeannie. Anyway, there's something important I want to ask your father. What? Well, I'm getting tired of being shoved around. I deserve a raise and, and, and a better job in this store. Besides, you don't want to be married to a window trimmer for the rest of your life, do you? Married to what? Oh, Donald, you aren't proposing to me. Well, I, I thought we were gonna... Mm, well, you said you liked me and I... Mm. <laughs> Didn't you? Yes, Donald, I like you. I think you're very sweet and very cute, but I'm not interested in marrying you. I like a man who talks up and is forward, not one who takes a whole year to ask for a raise. I've got to have a man who's a, a he-man. Shy. 
I've got to have a man who's a, a he-man. <laughs> I'll show her. Wait till I get through with that father of hers. I won't only have a raise, I'll be one of the, the top executives in, in this store. She's got her nerve, hasn't she? Who does she think she is? I'll show her. Donald, you tiresome idiot. Watch this bill. One battleship, $600. What do you think I am, an admiral? Oh, it's just, just a little battleship, sir, out for the front window. I thought it'd be nice for Flag Day. For, for, what are we running now, an Army and Navy store? Well, maybe you want to pay for this battleship. Oh, no, sir. And while you're here, one more thing. Stop making eyes at my daughter. You look like a lovesick calf. But, sir, I... The j- nerve of you, a window trimmer, trying to go with the daughter of Jonathan T. Halliday. Now, remember, you'd have nothing to do with my daughter. Is that understood? Yes, sir. All right. Now take this bill and send that confounded battleship back to the shipyards or navy yards or wherever it came from. Aye, aye, sir. Are you... (laughs) Right, Smith. Before you go, I've got a list of things I want you to do. Yes, Mr. Halliday? Suppose I'll have to write them down for you. You'll never remember. No, sir. Mm. Order one roll of wrapping paper. One roll of... Oh, drat this pen. The ink's all out. Oh, here, sir. Use my pen. Thanks. Good. At least you're good for something. If it's nothing more than... <coughs> right, Smith, look what you've done. I've got ink all over my suit. Oh, you look nice and blue. It's... <laughs> I'm covered with this stuff. She was... Uh, I'm sorry, sir. It's supposed to be a good pen. I bought it right here in your store, sir. You're fired. Get out of my sight. I don't even want to see you again. But, Mr. Haldy, I didn't do it on purpose. I said you're fired. Now get out and stay out. <laughs> What are you doing home at this hour? Mr. Halliday fired me. What? Well, and how, pray thee tell, will you pay your rent? I don't know, Miss Peebly. I guess I've got to find another job. Well, you'd better, because you can't live here for nothing. But I will give you credit for a while if you clean the house and wash the windows. Yes, Miss Peebly. And keep my shoes shine. Yes, ma'am. And help with the dishes. Yes, Miss Peebly. I guess so. Oh, by the way, a letter came for you today, all the way from Terre Haute. Here. Thank you, Miss Peebly. Well, aren't you going to open it? Maybe. Later. I'm not interested right now. Well, I am. Mr. Donald Wallington Wrightsmith III, Esquire. Dear Mr. Wrightsmith, this is to inform you that your late uncle, Herman Oliver Wrightsmith, left you his entire estate. Well, for pity's sake. Gosh. Let's read what else it says. If you will go to the address of 15563 Terre Haute Junction, this city, you will receive the fortune left you by your deceased uncle, yours very truly, Anthony May, attorney at law. Gosh. Donald, can't you say anything but gosh? Jiminy Christmas. (laughs) Just think you'll be rich. You think so, Miss Peebly? Gee, I haven't seen my Uncle Herman since I was eight. I didn't even know he was still living. Well, now he's dead. Oh. He's left you his... Yes, indeed. He's left you his entire fortune. Anyways, that's what the letter says. Gee. Oh, dear boy. Here, sit down in this nice, easy chair. After all, you've had a hard day. Now, how would you like me to fix your favorite dish this evening? You mean peanut butter sandwiches, open face? (laughs) Of course. After all, nothing's too good for my star border. <laughs> oh, dear boy. Haven't I always made you feel that Mrs. Peebly's rooming house is your own home sweet home? Five, five, six, three, Terre Haute Junction. Must be it. Looks like a funny place to be collecting a fortune. Smells funny, too. Well, might as well go in. Oh, uh, pardon me, sir. I'm Donald Wallington Wrightsmith III, and I'd like to see Mr. Roberts or Mr. Michaels. Oh, go no further, son. I'm Mr. Michaels. Oh, how do you do? Nice to see you. Oh, it's uh, nice to know you, Donald. We've been anxious for you to get here. Uh, here comes Robert. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Excuse me. Uh, yes. Uh, Roberts, this is uh, Don. <laughs> Uh, uh, sawdust makes me sneeze That's too bad uh, Michaels, did you say this is Donald? Yes, that is what I said Well, my boy, you have arrived at last <laughs> what, a, what a blessing It is? Well, gosh, when do I get my fortune? 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 Yeah, Mr. Myers, he's a lawyer fellow, you know he, he said my uncle left me a fortune And I was to get it from either one of you two uh, The lawyer's right, Donald And you're a lucky boy, a very lucky boy Eh? Uh, See, I don't understand. Why are you two dressed like clowns? Because, because we, we are, are clowns. clowns. Well, you are? Gee whiz. <laughs> well, you, you see, Donald, this is the winter quarters for the Haley Brothers Circus. You, you mean my uncle left me a circus? <laughs> Shall we show him, Michael? Well, why not, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Donald, this is it. All this? No, no, just these five lions. You, my uncle left me five lions? What's the matter, kid? You, you look kind of sick. Well, gee, what can I do with five lions? For one thing, you can feed them. They're hungry. Hungry? Oh, oh well, I'll run out and get a couple of cans of dog food. Uh, do, uh, do dog, a couple of cans of dog food? No, you know, you better bring back 500 pounds of meat. 500 pounds? Why, sure, they'll eat at least that for tonight's dinner. <laughs> you know, a hungry lion is an angry one. Say, you know, I just got an idea, boy, a terrific idea. What's that? Well, now, you could take over your uncle's act. Me? Why not? There's money in it, boy, lots of it. Oh, it's a sensational idea, Michaels. The kid would be great if it... Me? A lion tamer? <laughs> That's funny, you know. No, there's there's nothing to it. Roberts here will show you. I will? Oh, no, 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 no. No, you show him, Michael. Well, okay, okay, I will. I'll, I'll show you, boy, that it's not so dangerous. Oh. Uh, excuse me, will you, Donald, Sir. just a minute? Oh, uh, Roberts, Roberts, come over here. Yeah. What's up, Michael? Now, so I, I, don't, I don't want Donald to hear this. Listen, I've got a plan, something we'll do just for laughs. Yeah, I <laughs> well, well, well I, I'll, I'll take the kid out to the big tent. You get Gus, Gus, and the two of you get in that old lion skin back at the props of Emily. Oh, Mr. Michaels, this, this is real thrilling. Oh, yeah, sure it is. And once you're on to it, the circus will get in your blood, lad. You'll never want to leave it. I, I won't, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, here comes Prince now. Prince? Is that his name? Yes, Prince. yes, yes. Now, remember, uh, kid, this is my first time in the cage, so I won't be as... Good as your uncle was, but uh, you'll get the general idea. I will, yes. But will Prince? Ah, <laughs> uh, you lions are meek as kittens. Oh. Just show them who's boss, that's all, and they'll purr for you, purr every time. <laughs> they purr awful loud, don't they? Well, so long, Donald. Now, don't forget to watch everything I do, because when you get in there, remember, you'll have to do the same thing. I'll watch everything, Mr. Michael. Okay, Prince. Down, boy. Down, down. Back, 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 back. back, back. <laughs> Roberts. Cry out loud. Stop sneezing, will you? That's it, Prince. Now back. Back, back. <laughs> Come on, now. Go down. How good you are. <laughs> oh, down, you. No more roaring. I'll show you who's boss here. That's it. Back. Back, boy. That's it. Now sit. <laughs> ah, that's a good boy, Prince. Nice little cat. Meow. <laughs> You did it! You did it! Oh, you are wonderful, Mr. Michaels. You, you're real terrific. Well, son, you see, it uh, wasn't so dangerous. Oh, I wish I could do that. Well, go ahead and try it. Here's the whip, and the cage boy will stand ready with a gun. Do you think I can? Well, I, I showed you that it was absolutely nothing. Just remember to use your whip and, and get him to back away from you, that's all. Back away? Yes, that's right. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Michaels... I didn't know lions sneezed. Well, um, uh, this one is almost human. It it's sneezes from the snawdust. I see. <laughs> like yeah. Robert, you know, from yes. the snawdust. <laughs> yeah, well, g give me the whip, Mr. Michaels. Now you're talking, kid. I Another nice prince. Nice little old kitty. 
go, go back, you know. Hey, hey, you use the whip, kid. Yes. Down. Nice down. Nice prince boy. Come on, down. Down, you fool, you. Down. That boy, prince. Look, Mr. Michael. Ah. Keep your mind on what you're doing, boy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, prince. Back. Down. That's it. Nice boy. Back, back. Nice kitty. That's, that's, that's nice. Sit for un Uncle Donald. Sit. That's it. <laughs> now just stay there till I get out of here. Huh? I did it. I tamed a lion. That you did, son. Gee, I wish certain people could have seen me. Hey, where's Mr. Roberts? Oh, well, he, well, um, um, uh, he had to go to see a doctor about his, uh, <clears throat> his, uh, sneezing. Oh, too bad he didn't see me. I was good, wasn't I, Mr. Michaels? You were just great, Oh, kid. great, yeah. You know, I think you're right. I think I could, I could be a great lion tamer. Maybe even better than my uncle. Well, go ahead, kid. Take over your uncle's act. I told you it was a sensational idea. <laughs> you remember? Sure, I remember. Oh, it's a deal. As of today, I am a member of the Haley Brothers Circus. <laughs> Why isn't my dinner ready? Oh, dear boy, I didn't expect you back so soon. I'm not your dear boy. Donald, did you get the money? That's none of your business. <laughs> Donald, you've changed. Now listen to me. I've been paying you too much money for the room I've had in this crummy boarding house. Well, now you listen to me, Donald. I've done a lot of things for you. The only thing you've done for me is nag me. Mow the grass, Donald. Wash the windows, Donald. Do my shopping, Donald. Well, I got news for you. I may owe you money for back rent, but you owe me for washing dishes and mowing grass. And just try to collect. Ha! <laughs> I can't understand the change in you. You're like a different boy. A man, Peebly. In fact, I have suddenly become a very brave man. Jonathan Halliday, I've got a couple of things to say to you. First, Jeannie is going to marry me. What? My daughter wouldn't have you if you were the last man alive. You window trimmer, you? Ex-window trimmer, Dad. D Remember, you fired me, Dad. Don't call me Dad. And get out of this office. I'm going. I just wanted you to know where you stand, Dad. As future father-in-law, the new lion tamer for the Haley Brothers Circus. The was? You heard me. Goodbye, Daddy-o. Jeannie, I've got something important I wish to say. But first, mm, come here. Donald, Donald, don't do that. People are looking. It is nice. Ah, who cares? <laughs> it was very nice. I think I'll do it again. Oh, Donald. I never thought... Well, that is... Where'd you learn to kiss? I didn't. It's just you. Do you mean that? Sure. Oh. Well, what are we going to do about it? Do? About what, Donald? Us, you and me. I love you, Jeannie. Oh, we went all through that before. Remember? The day you got fired. I can't marry you. You haven't even got a job. Oh, but I have a terrific job. Really, Donald? Yes, I am a lion tamer. What? Oh, oh Donald, it's impossible. Only very brave men are lion tamers. Oh, oh, Donald, you must be fibbing. I am not. I've joined the Haley Brothers Circus. But, Jeannie, that isn't important right now. What is important is that you're going to marry me. Donald, you've got to show me. Show you what? That you're not afraid to go in a cage with a lion. Then I'll know for sure if you have changed and if you're really the he-man you say you are. And if I prove this little thing to you? Then I'll marry you. In spite of Father, Andersonville, even in spite of the fact I'm not sure having a lion tamer for a husband's better than a window trimmer. I never heard of a trimmer being eaten by a window. <laughs> Back 
like where a man can be a man. That's the circus life for me. Gotta find Michaels and Roberts and tell them the big news. The genie's gonna marry me and we'll live happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Roberts, roar again. <laughs> I think I was sensational. <laughs> I think you and Gus and the lion skin were sensational. And what a change in the poor kid, huh? <laughs> Back, Prince, nice boy, sit. Uh, uh, Mr. Michaels, did you see me? I tamed the lion. Oh, 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 I tamed the lion. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Roberts. Don. Mr. Michaels. Don. We we didn't expect you back so soon, kid. I just got back. Oh. Well. <laughs> yeah. Gesundheit, Mr. Michaels. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but I just overheard your conversation. Uh, then you know that... Uh... About the uh, trick we pulled on you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good while it lasted. Well, gee, kid, we're... We're sorry. You aren't mad at us, Don. No, what for? If I look like a big fool, it's it's not unusual. Huh? Well, we didn't mean any harm, Don. We, we were only kidding. Yeah, yeah, Michaels is right. We didn't think you'd take it so much to heart. Right. Well, I'm afraid I took it too seriously, and I got myself into a pretty bad jam. See, Jeannie and her father are coming down Saturday for the matinee performance to to see me tame a lion. Oh no! Well, you well you've got a problem, all right. What's the solution? Oh, sure, kid. Well, just, just take your pick. Let the lions tear you apart or, or get your heart torn out. Which is it? The lions. Are you sure you want to go through with this? No, I don't want to, but I'm going to. I'm not scared, you understand. I just naturally turn green this time of year. <laughs> Jeannie's out there in that audience. I've at least got to put up a battle. Even a losing one. Man, there's one thing I'll say in your favor, kid. You got determination. Thanks. It's almost time for your act. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Uh, is your gun full of blanks? Well, I got a real one this time. Something tells me I'm gonna need it. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Something must have gone wrong. Donald! Donald! It's one of your lions. He broke loose from the runway when they were letting him into the cave. What? Look! He's heading for the crowd! No, no, Jeannie's out there! Donald, where are you going? I've got to save Jeannie. No, oh, are you crazy? You'll be killed! Let go of me, Mr. Roberts. Can't be reasonable. You can't do anything. I'm gonna save Jeannie! Donald, come back! You'll be killed! Michael, stop him! Are you kidding? I can get out of here! Jeannie! Jeannie, be killed! I'll be killed, too. That wouldn't be so bad. We could go to heaven together. <laughs> no, I, I don't think I want to leave yet. Where's my gun? What did I do with that thing? Oh, here it is. Oh, little gun, don't fail me now. I'm too young to die. Oh, this is the lion. It, it, come here, the boy. Yes. Nice lion. Come closer. Oh, not too close. <laughs> Just close enough. Let me shoot you. Oof. I don't feel good. Lift your head a little. Yeah, I can't look. I'm gonna close my eyes. One, two, three. <laughs> Yay! Donald, Donald, you were wonderful. I was? Donald, my son, you were great. You saved our lives. I did? Donald, I can't believe it. What a guy. Yes, what a brave little guy. Come here, Donald. Gosh, Jeannie, that's not nice. People are looking. Oh, who cares? In fact, it was very nice. I think I'll do it again. Mm -hmm. Jeannie, where did you learn to kiss? I didn't. It's just you. Oh. Well, my boy, may I congratulate you? Congratulate me, sir? That's right, for winning my daughter. Jeannie, you'll marry me? Of course, Donald. And uh, <clears throat> as your future father-in-law, may I welcome you to the Halliday Emporium as vice president. Mm, thank you, sir. I, I accept the position. <laughs> that is, if, if it's all right with Jeannie. Oh, whatever you want, Donald. Oh, of course, Mr. Halliday. If you don't give me a raise, I, I might quit your old job. You must realize, as Andersonville's best window trimmer, I have been dependable, rely... Oh, no, not another one! Oh! 
Young for your fine performance and family theater's presentation of The Lion Tamer. You know, many of our family theater listeners have written to tell us that they have begun the practice of daily family prayer in their own homes. Well, it's certainly heartwarming to know that our little message is being heard and followed by people all over the country. But occasionally, someone writes to tell us that prayer is not as easy as it sounds, that it's difficult to pray. Well, I'd like to read a little poem that may be of help to you, if you feel that way, too. It was written by James J. Medcalf, and it's called Time to Pray. It is not difficult to pray when we are faced with fears, or when the shadows climb the walls and tragedy appears. Our voices rise above the roar of every raging sea, and words of sudden eloquence present our tearful plea. But when there is no storm, and when we have a perfect day, we seldom turn our thoughts to God, or take the time to pray. And if it is a duty then, it also is a task to thank Him, or to let Him know the miracles we ask. And yet, a daily prayer to God, it's such a little thing, compared to all the comfort and the blessing it can bring. Thank you for being with us. And remember, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theaters brought to you Alan Young in The Lion Tamer with Mona Freeman as your hostess. Others in our cast were Eleanor Audley, Ken Christie, Mary Lee Robb, Jim Backus, and Howard McNear. The Lion Tamer was written by Dale Newton Whitney with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman and was directed for Family Theater by J.F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who have felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given up their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. Join us next week at this time when Family Theater will present Maureen O'Sullivan and Otto Kruger in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.